That's it? That's all? Wait a sec. Hang on. Let me do that again. Hey, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time it might be where you are. Happy Halloween! Yeah! Get some! How is it out there, chat room? Good morning. Thank you. I am the Dread Pirate Fritz. Is that a thing? You like the dramatic ambient music? Yeah. So, thank you so much for tuning in and joining us. My name is Jeff Fritz. Today is, yes, October 31st, 2019. We're going to write a little bit of code today. How's it going, chat room? Dee Dee Walsh is here. She's dressed like a convict and has candy. That's all right. There you go. <clears throat> Copper Beardy's username is his pirate name. There you go. Uh, Kate's is here. Hello, hello. Uh, Simorp. Hello. Good to see you. Killer Coder PT. Yanzor is here. Job in PA. You like the you like the ambient music? Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Hard indeed. It's so good to see you out there, mateys. And this is the one day I had an excuse not to shave. <laughs> see that? Uh, Hack Sparrow. That could be a thing. That could totally be a thing. I, I like the Dread Pirate Fritz. I I'm gonna run with that. <laughs> How's it going there, Ancient Coder? Good to see you, Rabbit Man One Hundred Nine. Hello, hello. Good to see everybody. Thanks so much for tuning in. Um, oh my gosh, this is a two for a day. I I enjoy these these days because uh, not only are we streaming here, but we're gonna cut right over and we're gonna go jump over to the Dev Intersection channel. I've got two guests joining me today. My co-host Richard Campbell is back. It's the last broadcast before Dev Intersection in Las Vegas, and uh, everybody's got costumes. It's gonna be it's gonna be a fun afternoon here. So thank you for the host, Rabbit Man Encoding, dialed in from Chile. Welcome. It's so good to have you join us. Thank you so much. Um, I'm waiting for. Uh, I have a Linux VM here that wanted to install updates, and it's taken its good old time installing updates. Thanks so much, there, Ubuntu. I'm gonna I'm gonna kill time while I'm waiting for you to finish installing updates. There, you punk. What the heck do you think you're doing out there? Seriously, this is. Th that is not allowed. I, gosh. So, um, chat room. We've got a couple things that I want to hit here today. We, we got state management of our train widget that we've been working on here on stream. We've got that working properly now. So that if you refresh the page, if you, if, if for some reason the server goes away, maybe we deploy a new version of the server. Um, it will remember the state of our widget and re properly restore everything for us when we start using the widget again. Blazer, Mr. Magoo, it's good to see you again. Thanks so much for tuning in. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to be doing a lot of that today, and I know my voice is just going to fail miserably in about three hours. And we'll see what happens after that. And and I will face the wrath of my co-host, Richard. <laughs> <laughs> Let me get some music playing here in the background. Of course, I'm going to play. I'm not going to play any spooky music or anything like this. I'm going to play music to code by in the background here because this gets us in the groove, gets us in the flow. Dee Dee Walsh screamed so much at the haunted house last night that she has no voice. Haunted house? Haunted house, you say? What? What? I know nothing about a haunted house.
Yeah, some of us had some fun with the camera at all. Did we all just lose sound? Did I turn it off? I might have had not had sound on that scene. Yeah, I might not have. Rats. No, that scene didn't have sound. Oh, <clears throat> oh man. So there's this funny thing that happens with OBS where it doesn't always have sound on every scene. You actually have to add your sound devices on every scene. Rats. Oh, that's a shame. <clears throat> C-17 went to Universal Studios Orlando Halloween Horror Nights a couple nights back. <clears throat> a couple weeks back. Ten scare houses in one evening. Oh, my gosh. That's a lot. I'll be in Universal Studios a week from today, actually, with the folks from Microsoft Ignite. So I am really, really looking forward to that. Um, this is a pain in the neck here. I am so sorry, friends, but I am... I'm looking at uh, the software updater here for Ubuntu, and uh, it, it's kind of reminding me of of Windows Update. It's just frozen and hanging, doing nothing here. What the, what the heck? What 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 do you think you're doing there, my Linux VM friend? That's um. What do you do, right? You didn't know that hat was this big. Look at how big that hat is. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Takes up a quarter of the screen there. You should see what happens when I try and pack it to take it anywhere. My gosh. So, um, you know what? I'm just going to I'm gonna just minimize that. Goodbye, software updater. I don't care about you anymore. Let's get into our project. Let's talk about this. Um, we've, of course, been working on this uh, distributed chatbot that uses Akka.net, the actor model. And, right, the actor model is a way that we can program and build, build software. Um, and we've also got features uh, to do widgets on screen that, for this distributed chatbot, right? We'll be able to manage different threads, different processes to connect to different, different Twitch chat rooms. Well, we've been building a widget and learning about server-side Blazor, learning about CSS animations along the way. <clears throat> through the vehicle of interacting with Twitch. Ubuntu Beard has hijacked the stream, indeed. He has Ubuntu Beard, indeed. There's... <clears throat> <clears throat> There's definitely a thing there. And man, my voice is going to be all gravelly all day. Ooh. So, looking at the list that I have there above me. So, we've restored the train state. We've got that done. Offline development isn't quite there yet. We've we've been able to get some things working though. Um, refactor resolving sec services. This is something that Stelzi is working on. We have a pull request out there that he's been building out for us. Um, getting started instructions. This goes hand in hand with this, right? That's uh, number thirty six. Let me add a reference to that, and we'll talk more about the couple of checkbox items that I have over there. Uh, related to 36. So we get those two features connected. Um, all right. So our, our bot is sitting out here now, and we had a slight problem yesterday with some of the JavaScript that we had written that it was automatically refreshing the page for us when we would navigate out to the login page. And that was a bit of a problem. That was a uh, that was really annoying, real to be perfectly honest. But today we're going to work on... We got that cleared up. We figured out where we were detecting the state incorrectly of our, of our bot, of our application, and getting it to restore properly now. So let me head over and let's talk about... Uh, head over to our code and let's talk about the, the code that we need to finish here to get our positioning of the train proper on screen. Hey, Stelzy, good to see you. Thanks so much for joining us. Um, and I'm, I've been keeping an eye on how the camera's working. I turned on autofocus. I turned on a couple other features here, and we'll see just how well it runs. Um, so I'm going to .NET watch run here so that the bot is running. It's in the background and just kind of sitting here helping us out. I'll open that up so I can do my Git interactions over here on this other tab. But this will start up and we will start working 
locally. Um, not there yet. Finish loading. Let's go. There it is. All right. So far, so good, says Major Lip. Thank you. I appreciate the feedback. I did turn off the wear a different hat redemption today for the for our channel points. Um, right, it's... It, it, I'm wearing a pirate hat. It's kind of a theme thing. So I've turned that off so that it's not available to be redeemed. However, I have added, and I don't have the font on here, I have added the ability... And I, I should prep this first. I should have prepped this. I need to put it in the thing here. Um, let me get the papyrus font. I've added the ability for you to say, you know what, use the papyrus font. Let's get the... Uh, yes, don't mind if I do. Download the free Papyrus regular font. Yes, please. And it's not here. Is it under P? It better be under P. I don't see it under. Was it Was it down at the bottom? There it is. Papyrus regular font. Right, look at that. Yeah. Thank you for the follow, T-Bone. I appreciate you joining us. Uh, let's see, I should be able to download this. Uh, yeah, open that. Some PNGs, there's my TTF. I should be able to uh, extract this, put it down. Yeah, I'll put it right there in that folder. Come here, you. Extract it there. Oh, good. So I, right, I forget how to install. I did this just a few, just a little bit ago. Um, because I put uh, Comic Sans in here. There we go. Install Papyrus. Yes, please. What do you mean install failed? Installed. Good. All right. So now... I should be able to go back over to Visual Studio Code. I can't believe I'm going to try this. Switch font. Now, I think I need to put it actually in the box. Can I just say Papyrus and have it work? No, it doesn't know what it is. Um, let me go to Settings. Um, here. And Text Editor. Right, I'm going to look for Font. It's right there. Uh, there's a bunch of those. Font Switcher down here. This is the one I've been using. Right. So I should be able to put that into the mix here. And let's see if this works now. Switch fonts. Nope, it doesn't see papyrus. Papyrite font. No, no, no. The Panera Bread font. Mm, can I code like a pirate? I don't know if I can code like a pirate indeed. But no, I, I can't back that up. I can't. Um, what was the name of the font? I thought I just had it running there. Right? Um... <laughs> Right, the fonts application. Right, we just put it down. There, papyrus. Papyrus regular. Maybe it needs to be spelled like that. Right? So if I go back over here, switch fonts. Nope, still doesn't work. Hmm. If I were to use args, I don't have a pirate. Parrot, no. Um, yeah, it's not picking up. Let me see here. Yeah, just the name is Papyrus. I should be able. Um, right, I should be able to choose that. Right? Font size, font weight. Right, that should be... Nope, not picking it up. Hmm. Hmm. All right, maybe we can't use Papyrus in... Right, I can get Comic Sans. That was no problem. Let me go back to Consolus. Hey, that's not Consolus. Nope. There, that's the one I want. 
Maybe it's because it's a TTF? I tried Papyrus regular Kates, yeah. Right. Um, here. Um. Switch fonts. Yeah, Papyrus regular doesn't show up. These other ones do. <clears throat> I wonder if I need to restart. Right? So it can find it? So it can actually see it on disk or something? I don't know. M. Holloway, hello, hello. Sometimes it does get picky. Indeed. Switch font. Nah, it doesn't see it. Right? And if I mouse over these others... Yeah, it's not loading it. Um, maybe it's because it's... Right? Papyrus font Linux. Maybe it's I have the wrong type. I should use Helvetica? Oh gosh, no. No, 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 no. Um, it's a true type font. How do I get it running on? I should be able to get it. Right? Dimorphic? That looks close. I don't know. How do we install? Yeah, here we go. <laughs> oh my gosh. First you need to add the papyrus repository. Yeah. And then we'll get that ugly font. Let's see if we can get that to... Oh, wait, that's an icon theme. I don't want the icon. And that's not how you spell papyrus either. Um... No. Um... Font names are duplicated in the font selector. Hmm... No. All right, we won't light it up over here. But we'll definitely have it over in Windows. And that'll be available. And this is the last day of Ubuntuber. So I'm okay with not having that available today. Hey, Yalka. Good to see you. Um, so I'm going to run over to the stream rewards. Can I just disable that? Can I disable it from here? Yeah, there we go. Pause redemptions on that. And there we go. Cool. All right. So we can't do papyrus. That's okay. But I can still do light mode if folks are interested in getting me to flip to light mode. So, all right. Heading back over here. This is running locally. I should be able to log in to my bot now. And I should be able to... There it goes get over here and view the user activity train. Now, when we left off, um, I can spell localhost. Really, really I can. Okay. Do you really think you have a chance against us, Mr. Cowboy? I do, and it's Mr. Pirate to you today, Hans. All right. That's enough of your nonsense. So, it looks like it's starting from the from the, I don't know if it's the right place, but it's off screen. I don't want the train to start off screen like that, right? And if I put another one in here, it, I end up with this weird thing where it's not stacked and starting. It should have actually changed location and moved all the way over and reset location here. Spicy condiment. So we are working on the positioning of the train. It restarts in the appropriate location here. So if I click into this and right, if I put the mouse, it's right about there and I refresh. Okay, now it's not restarting from the proper location. It was doing this. There, it restarted from the same location that it left. So I have it restarting from the proper location when we need to restart the bot, right? So here's where my mouse is. And if I refresh, it picks up right where it left off. So if for some reason we lose the server, 
right? If I kill the server here, see it says it's trying to reconnect. Instead of getting the gray screen, we'll remove this text when everything's running again. This should pick up and place the train right about the same location again, right there where my mouse is. When it, when it detects everything, so it's about the second wheel is right there, and it's about the same place. So the widget functions properly in restoring the connection, right? And if I refresh, it's at about the same place. So we're pretty good there. It's when we have a new car come on, it's not starting the zero width position, and it is now properly going back over to the right side, it isn't starting at the appropriate place on the far right side. Where I'd like it to start is such that you can see the entire length of the train. But I don't know where exactly to place that. So we'll get that placed properly. And this should end far enough off, far enough off the left side of the screen that it, it's gone completely into my little train station here with the six on it good morning ashdev good to see you it's a fine halloween morning out there if you know what i mean right so um so i'm going to go back over to my code over here and i i thought i thought our test web page that we had over here let me copy that url and if I open a new tab here and we look at, no, that's, no, that's not where I wanted to go. I don't want the remote URL. Hang on. I want, come here, you copy the path, go there. So I want this to go through. It should have started at the right place over there. And I want it to go through and stop when it hits the inside edge. So this mock-up that we have here looks like it's starting at the appropriate place and going all the way through. And if I look at where it starts, the calculation that I'm doing for where it starts, it's entirely on the screen. Seems like the width of the container plus white space wrapping is breaking it. I don't know. Some people, they just want to be a pain in the neck. All right. So, and actually, wait a second. Looks like, yeah, here we go. There's folks now talking about state management more and more for Blazor on, twi uh, on Twitter that just popped up. <laughs> Look at that. Um, all right. So what I'm running into is, yes, I want to get this to go all the way through the width of the container plus white space. Um, so the width of the container actually, right. I can make this whatever size I want. And right. If I drop that down, it will properly take in my case, five seconds to get the whole location across. Right, and that's and it picks up speed because it's going to take its five seconds to get the whole way across. So, so, so I think my animation that I have here is correct. The width of my train is this wide, so the left position that I want it to end at is 100%. I want it, I want it to start at 100% all the way on the far right of the screen minus the width of the little train in this green block. So if I translate that, let me, where is it? I want to put this over here. And if I look at my razor now for this, okay. So my initial position percentage, that's gonna be the 
starting location should be 100% minus the width of the train. Now, I've started I've started running into and I think I'm tripping over myself here a little bit. So help me out here chat room. Um we got to get the maths right here. Look at all this. Uh, oh gosh. So it feels like the width of the train Right, I need to get the total width of the train, right? Scale it. <laughs> and that's what this 100 divided by 320 is. It's scaling the width of the train. Counting the number of cars in the train. And trying to make that this 400 pixels here. Spicy Condiment says... Uh... Let me put that up. Spicy Condiment says, The container div holding the train can be as long as you like, 10,000 pixels. It'll be transparent and off-screen anyway. Shouldn't really matter how long the container is. Well, I want it, I, I want it to be on-screen so you can see it. Right? If, if the train isn't actually on-screen, if it, if it doesn't appear here, it, it kind of loses a little bit of it. What matters is just tracking the train length inside the container. Yeah, yeah. So the the length over here is 100. It's the width of my of, of my uh, what's it called? My little train station minus the length of the train. So I think what I what might be easy to do is. To clear this up and make this a little bit easier to track is to go back over to the user activity model here and let's create a property called train width right and this is going to be well, is it going to be an int let's make it a decimal and we'll call it train width I'm waiting for our friend fierce kittens to pop on and, and make fun of me for wearing this hat Har matey it's good to see a boom boom thanks so much for tuning in white space no wrap on the train container that's a good idea too. Let me let's put that on the train container, which I I call the train track horizontal. Um, and uh, let's put it right here. Uh, right, white space, no wrap. Can we just put a width one hundred percent on the train div? Well, um. Sure. Um, it should do that. Right? So, make what overflow? Eh. Let me get the calculation here copied in properly. So, the train width is... There it is. The train width is this. Right, let's make sure that that's correct. Now, gosh, this looks ugly. So 100 divided by 320. So that's the scale, the scale of the width. I don't, I think this one's wrong. Right, um, if I go back over to here, see it didn't even pull into the station properly. So I think we have the width calculated wrong still again um okay so right the height is 100 pixels the oh no they're all the same height they're always the same height right so that percentage hey Janesco um right the image is yeah it's 320 high 261 wide so 100 over 320 will get me the ratio to shrink it right so 100 over 320 is the oh ratio my. so 100 over 320 times 261 which is right the come here you 81 5 6 6 7 is that right is that is that right um where's the calculator 
No, I don't. I want the calculator. Isn't there a calculator in Linux? Okay, fine. I'll go to the calculator over here in Windows. Uh, not that one. Right, so 100 divided by 320 times 261, 8156. Is that the right, the same number that our browser is calculating? Eighty-one five six. Okay, so it is calculating that properly. Has anyone made a browser add-in that clicks the Fritz Bits bonus automatically? No. Hey, Fairy Wings, thank you so much for the host. So that looks like it's calculating properly the the width of this first one. So the second one, right? One hundred divided by three twenty times one thirty-five. Right. Let me go. 100 divided by 320 times 135 is the width of the car. 4218. So go back over here. Is that 42? Yep, 4218. Okay, so we are getting the correct look the correct uh, size of that. So um <laughs> so that's the correct size for the locomotive that's the correct size for a car times the counter minus one so right when when we've only got one car it'll be zero cars that we're adding on here to appropriately so that's correct okay go back over to the razor here so this will be the initial position percentage Right, and this will, hopefully, will make this a lot easier to read. And we'll be able to figure out. Right? Minus train width. Um, so, I actually, I want the left to go to, yeah, 100 minus train width percent uh, pixels. So... That looks correct, right? Hey, Diavo, hope the code doesn't scare me. Not, not afraid of it at all here. We're doing good. Pluto Nan, does anyone have a good resource for learning about expressions? You're struggling to understand them. Uh, what kind of expressions? What kind of expressions are you having problems with there, Pluto Nan? Code ween. No. Uh, that's a bad idea. So this feels like the right syntax for this. Let me restart that. So this should reconnect here as, as soon as this is done. You're having trouble with your smiling expression? That could be a thing. Okay. There it goes, refreshed, and I'm at zero because we've we've elapsed. Okay, so I'll add one, and it's still off the screen. That starting position is too far to the right. So, all right, now let's start digging in here again. Take a look at that style that's being reported. Right, so the style here move train from left <clears throat> now 100 percent minus zero pixels so it didn't calculate the width of the train properly it calculated it as zero pixels right and when i refresh again right it's still calculating the train width as zero pixels so now now we've got something we can sink our teeth into the train width right is over here train width right should be do you see what's going on there it's converting it to an integer right 
these are all converting to integers. So we're losing the precision. Right? Let's see. That's going to that's going to refresh and and should position it properly. You haven't seen the M syntax before. So that helps to specify, helps to force the number that I'm keying in there. There we go. Now we should probably make that like just two or three digits. We don't need it that precise. But if I add another one on here, it's it's not all the way proper. 100% minus 123.7 is that the width of the train. Right, so there's my train. And... Uh, what's the width of this? Right, so that's 81 and 42. Right, 123. Yeah, that's about the right width, the correct width. Basically, we... Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Um, I can't help you with that, with that Python right now, no. So, yes, F and D give you float and double, will force into those types. So this feels correct. I I want to make sure the, the train width, when I output it there, it, this here, it, it's to too, many, too much uh, precision, right? So let's force it to three digits precision and see if we can get that to work. Now, I'm not sure why I'm getting... Can I convert from double to iFormat provider? Uh, what do you mean you can't? It's not a double now. Right, I cast it two string, train width, two string, so that's now... Uh, oh, I have to put quotes. Right, that should... Um, mm. uh, we're going to need to escape those quotes, aren't we? So now it doesn't like that because... Cannot be applied to operands of type... Okay, now you don't like that on the end. Uh, <laughs> um, there are folks that know Python, but you're distracting from our conversation, uh, the dread editor. I'm doing math on an oh on number and a string. You're right. You're right. Um, that one's okay. I'm not doing math on that. I think I just need a double quote on these because I'm doing formatting, right? And that should go away. Uh, three arguments? What do you mean three arguments? Right, because if I make it like that... No, that... that yeah, uh, oh, okay, we're all right there. So this one, um, let's take this, and on the result of this, two string, right, 0 0.000, so that we get it formatted a little bit better. That's better. Right, kill this, restart. Hey, just a viewer. Do I have to cast to a number? Well, it is a number coming back. I need. I want to get it to format because I'm wondering if this is confusing CSS a little bit here. Um. Oh man, 
there's a couple things going on here. <laughs> um, it's perfectly okay to have that number of points after the decimal. Well, it's not, right? It's not starting properly here, right? Force it to start. That looks good. Restart. It's not all the way on the edge. Right, let me let it get a little bit across there and we'll move it. Hey, Frankus. Hello, hello. So, now it's a little bit out. It should go all the way back over to the edge, and it's it's not. Um, right, when we get a new request... Yeah, 100% minus 334.688. It's... Write a new follower, it should go all the way back over to the right. I I wonder if it's not stopping at first. Thank you for the follow, Red Fox Creates. Welcome. Um hmm. <laughs> Thinking, thinking, thinking. Okay. So when we get a new follower. Yeah, we need to reset the location and then kick off the train timer. Right? Both add the same animation, then switch between them in Blazor. That will reset. But I still have to force... Right, I have to force that. I want to stop the train, send the update, restart the train, send the update. Right there, stop. I, I'm not, I need to start the animation after I stop it. Here. So that it goes away. Right, because start animation right now is just, uh, where is it? Right, it's just saying state has changed. We might do some other things in it, but when we stop, we want it to actually, there we go, reset the location. That's better. It's still not quite the right position. Mary Jo Stabler, thank you for the host. Good morning. Are you looking for lots of args? No. <laughs> so if I reset now, it's still picking up right at the same place. It's not... There. Now it reset location. Right? Hmm. Hmm. Just change class name and it'll restart. Oh, I see what you're saying. Instead of me hiding it, you're suggesting that in my class here called Move Train, right, but I still, right, I'm changing it here by resetting, by starting and stopping the timer. So how do I set that class from Blazor? I would have to pass the DOM object in and be manipulating it directly. Right. So, I th think, right, but it's still, when I get a new one here, it's not moving back, it's not resetting the position to zero. Why isn't it resetting the position to zero? There it did. Why doesn't it go all the way back? Let's go back and look at it. Um, not load persistent configuration. Down in here. 
I'm not resetting the position. Let's do that first. Right, and then here's where we're incrementing everything. Yeah. So now this ooh, it should be reloading because I just changed some C sharp. There it goes. So this should restart and we should see it pick up. Right, somewhere right about here. Yeah, there we go. So it is remembering it and bringing it out. The animation has a duration. Yes, it does. Wisdom Leatherworks says it looks like it thinks zero is the zero of the new car. I don't know. Maybe. If I refresh now, it should... There, it backed up. Okay. So... I'm going to cheat now. I'm going to reach into my persistence that I have saved here on disk. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Right? Hey, look, Killer Coder PT was running. I'm going to reset my counter here. Thank you for the follow. Uh, is that FK Olay 24? Welcome. Um, I'm going to reset these so they're really far in the past. So that when it reloads it, it starts with zero. There we go. So it is not active. When I start this, we should see the train appear on the far right side. Good. Hey there, TBD Gamer. Is it the fence post problem? What do you mean the fence post problem? So if I refresh again, it didn't reset. It didn't move all the way to the right. Right? It's picking up at the same place. And what's funny about that is, right, because... The location that it should be starting from is calc 100% minus 208, 125. So that's the width properly of it. TBD Gamer, oh my goodness! Terminator 1000, Terminator 800, bonus 180. Oh my goodness! Thank you so much for that, for that very kind cheer. And we're going to make a donation just like we do for all of our subs and all of our cheers to St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital. Thank you very much. All quarter long, all of our donations, all of our cheers, all of our subs will go to them. Thank you very much. Um, refresh and it should pick up. Now it backed up a little bit there. So that worked properly, right? The the new train, right? Let's get let it get a little bit further away from over there. Doesn't feel like it's doing the reset. But if I refresh, it actually backs up to the appropriate location. Right? So that was about where the end of it was. It's about the same place. Hmm. Okay. Shouldn't the location be 100% plus train, train length? 100% plus train length. No, because 100% plus the left 100% is the right side of the screen. Plus train length means that it would then be further off screen from the browser and you wouldn't see it coming onto the screen. I want to see it start on screen and go all the way across, right? So if I go back over to my markup, right, and change this, and I'm going to change the animation duration just so that we can make this make this a little bit faster for us to see, be able to detect that something's happening. Um, and now let's kick it over. Because we have this working properly in plain HTML. It's a pirate train. No. It knows it has to restart. Here we go. Right, and it'll refresh, and this is about where the train is, right about here where my mouse is. There's the refresh. Okay, 
So it started at the wrong location completely. Well, I changed it to a plus now. Also, look at the scroll bar. If I refresh now, right, it should start somewhere in here, and it's not, right? That shouldn't be a plus where it starts from. That should be a minus. Restart that. Scroll bar can be disabled. You'd expect that scroll bar there for starting off screen. Yes. Yep. When I get this right, you can add a second animation where I rotate the whole train 180 degrees and whoosh back to the start. Yes. Yes. Overflow Y, none. Right. We need that on the body, right? Oh my gosh, Jeff. Overflow. Why? And you're suggesting none. Yeah, I think that's going to be correct. Okay, thank you for the follow. Who was our new follower there? CPT. Is that Captain Gixer? Welcome. Okay, see, it didn't. It actually, it didn't go all the way into the train. The train station there. Um, AP Twitch, welcome. Thanks so much for the follow. So, now because I forced it to 30 seconds, it's actually not calculating the location properly. That's fine. Um, right, I can force that back to zero and put this way back in time. Right, so I just reset this. Okay, so here comes my first one, and it looked like it started at the right place, and it's going across. Add a second one, and it didn't move. So, it's, it's not there at reset. It should... It, reset back to the beginning. It's resetting to about the right place. That feels like almost a browser thing. You know? Like, why aren't you going back to the... There, it did. Like, I should be forcing that. Um, the Dread Editor, it sure sounds like you're doing homework or a test. And I'm tempted to ban you because that's not something ethically that we'd support here. It really looks like you're doing homework or a test in class if you can't hear us. And I know closed captioning is turned on. Because, yeah, um, you know what? I'm banning you for 30 minutes. I'm going to give you a 30-minute timeout. Ethically, represent your own assignments with your own work. I'm sorry. I, I do not feel that it's appropriate for you to be reaching out to folks in my stream and asking them to do your homework for you. You're not learning anything. You're um, portraying our work as your own. That's plagiarism. So, I appreciate your interest in the stream, but you need to learn and do your own work. So, um, okay, so this is functioning properly. Let me come back. Uh, we could also give give them the wrong answer. You're correct. Um, okay. 
So why isn't it resetting the position when we set it when we set it to hidden? It's like it's not painting properly and then it refreshes the browser right away. You know? Um So let's go over here. Part of me says after the start animation, we should do like a like a half second pause. You know? Right? If we do, and I hate to do that, await task delay 500 milliseconds. Just get it to refresh the screen. You know? I mean, the await ahead of that should clean that up. So, now fishing dev, that this is something that that occasionally we get on stream, and it's it's folks that are asking asking us to do their homework. Um, and if you're if you're doing homework, um, sorry, that's not the type of help that that we're going to offer people here. So. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm going to be, those are kind of some of the rules that we have, right? So I'm going to reset that last event time here so I can trick it into thinking that we're restarting the browser. Oh, come on. This one. Right, so if I refresh, this should reset to zero. There it is. Add our first train. There it is. And it's going to scoot all the way across the screen, and we should see it dock at that one over there. Asking test questions makes C Sharp Fritz aggravated. Indeed. Yes. Oh, yes, yes. So, 30 seconds still feels like a long time for that thing to get across, you know? But it is getting across there. Fine. Come on. Get into the little train station, and it should stop exactly in the train station. Good. Right? We've got the one ap appropriately working. They'll never pass the class that way. Well, it, this is true. This is true. I wonder if there's some padding around those images that are throwing off some of my calculations. Let me restart this. It should, it did back up appropriately all the way to the right side and going across. Another follower. There we go. So we could add to Blazer Mr. Magoo's point, we could add an animation there that has it go back, pick up, pick up another train car, and come around. So, and I'm not sure... It, yeah, it's, it's still hanging a little bit. I think there's some padding or something around those images that we're missing. Because I'm calculating the width of these images right? I feel like there's a margin or something, and they're not right up against each other, you know? Oh, hi there, I am not myself. It's good to see you. Um, yeah, I think it sure looks like there's... It, and look at that, four pixels. It's four pixels wide between them. So, let's go back over here. Go to those images in the markup. Right, and let's see if we can force that that margin, right, to zero pixels. Let's make sure the padding is also zero pixels as well. Look at that. This thing is still it it's it's stuck. All right, restart that, and it's not going to start in the right position because I've got things set wrong. See how it it's sticking out, right? And if it's six and there's four pixels that per car, right, that would be 24 pixels. That might be 24 pixels that it's sticking out there. It might be. Right? So we might have something here. So, and and look, the overflow. It, was, it wasn't overflow Y. It needs to be overflow X on that. Right? So if those are right up against each other and there's nothing in between, it should go all the way in and stop with that last car in there. All the way in there. Nope. Nope. 
do a hard refresh here. See if now nah, see there's still space in. I think there's still space, right? Because if I look at this, we look at these images, right? See, look at that text, four pixels, right? For this little bit of text right here. This right there, text four pixels. So, even though there's zero margin around it, right? This, I don't know what this is here, but it's it, the, the doodad, the thing, is allocating four pixels for it, right? That's weird. Um, let me come to your question there. That's a good question, Dark Lejay. Let me, let's make sure that we address that. And Blazer Mr. Magoo has a good question as well. Um, Dark Lejad asks, How exactly is the train supposed to reset? What's the way it should work? Stop animation at car counter, restart animation. Let's, let's talk that through real quick. Make sure that... So here's, right, if I... And it, there we go. Um, so when there's a new, a new follower, and we can simulate that because I have a thing down here, it should reset the position to the far right, add the car, add to the car counter, and restart the animation. So it now looks like it's doing that properly, but right, what we're now seeing, and this might be a blazer thing, is there is this little bit right here of text that is being allocated, that is having four pixels allocated to it that we need to address. So Blazer Mr. Magoo is asking, do we have some white space between the image tags? We do. We might be able to clean that up. Thank you for the follow, Solotarius Soul. Appreciate you joining us. So, right, here's the first image tag. Do we... Right? I mean, there. I'm going to close this so we can see a little bit better here. I mean, this is what's being output by Blazer. And there is some white space there. Yeah, so how do we get rid of that? Try margin left minus four. Suggest two wolf design. How's it going, two wolf? Great to see you. Um, so let's go. Yeah, if we just say on the images, right? Uh, let's get rid of that one. Margin left minus four pixels to try and get it to cover up for that space, right? Refresh the browser here. Yep. Because we updated um, because we updated the markup we need to kick the server here to get it to recompile here yeah fighting the space between inline block elements yes indeed so oh my goodness moist booty boy moist booty boy just gifted 10 subs holy crow thank you so much 10 gift subs Thank, that is amazing. That's 10 gift subs we're going to give. We're going to make donations to St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital. But these 10 folks, you just got the ability to remove ads here on the channel. 17 emotes you can use everywhere here on Twitch. And you can throw emotes at my face, at the screen. Thank you so much. Let's congratulate. Let's thank all those folks. And it did dock properly now with that minus four. Great job, Two Wolf. Let me, let's congratulate our, our new subs here. Fishing Dev, Dax, CA2 Live, Foachon, Blanc, Blanc River, Dunking Kruger, Worldwake, Shookian, Slickver1, Wisdom Leatherworks. Congratulations. You all just got, uh, you all just got uh, subscriptions to the channel. Thanks to our friend Moist Booty Boy. Thank you very much. That is so kind of you. Use those emotes everywhere on Twitch where fine emotes are accepted. Are these really the questions that I was called here to answer? Yes. CSS questions. That's Those are the questions we've been called here to answer. And we're going to get this right. The positioning now on the left looks like it's correct there. 
I think we may have found our issue here, right? So, yeah, and I don't have... So if I add another follower, that looked like it started from the right place. Let's do it again. It looks like it's the right place now. Oh, yeah, fire those end ends. There you go. Very cool stuff. Thank you so much. Look at this. I And, and look, the train actually oh touches, right? And, and there's a little bit of a gap in there. I, I'm feeling pretty good about this. Oh, my goodness. Friends, hang on. I know. And then... Um, Greetings, my excellent friend. Our friend Matt Auerbach is here. How's it going, Matt? You're just in time for the Halloween party. Thank you for the follow. Loopy Nid. It's great seeing you. So, the train animation, it should stop with that last blue car all the way into the train. Into the little train station deal there. In the train container, set font size zero. <gasps> I hadn't thought of that. That's a great idea. That is a great idea. Here. Um, so if we say font size zero, right? Um, I should be able then to get rid of that minus four pixels, right? So I need to I need to kick the server. How's it going there, Matt? Great to see you. Appreciate you joining us. That's Matt Auerbach, our friend from Twitch Dev. Twitch Dev Show, you can check them out Thursday afternoons, typically on twitch.tv slash twitchdev. Uh, you're wearing the jersey. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. There's the Twitch Dev Show. You can check them out. And a shout-out to our friend Matt there. There you go. Um, oh, my gosh. So so we did give uh, our friend, our Twitch Dev friends Matt Auerbach and and uh, John Blue Lava Bulava. Uh, it, Live Coders jerseys as well um, as a thank you for their support of the Live Coders team. Very cool stuff. And that should get all the way through there. And it, right, I'm able to do that now with that font size zero. Great find there. Floating the images left, not quite so much. Uh, Dark Lajid asks, why isn't this a normal IDE? This is on Linux. What's my suggestion? Well, I'm using, I'm using Visual Studio Code. So you have the ability to turn on, to light up all the different IDE-like features that you'd like. All through the month of October, we've been observing Ubuntober and using Ubuntu Linux. There isn't... I mean, you could use uh, JetBrains Rider if you'd like. However, Visual Studio Code is the most popular code editor in the world. So we're going to use this. So... Some of us are not on Windows, and we're working on Linux this month. Yep, yep, yep. So we want to make sure that folks see that you can get a great experience here. Um, you love VS Code. Terrific. Yeah, it's a great editor. Really great stuff. You can customize it to all kinds of things. You can even use it to light up um, uh, Visual Studio Live Share, this icon here, so folks can connect in and navigate around the application. So... I'm actually pretty happy with how this works. The only thing, if I wanted to be a stickler, is you, there's a little, look at this, look, look, I'm gonna, right, if I wanted to be a user interface wonk, look at that, there's a little bit of, a little bit of uh, white space out here that you can see stuff around. So what do you think, chat room? What's gonna be the best way to hide? Yeah, you see that, Wolfhound, right? Caparot asks, isn't Visual Studio Code a pain to set up? No, actually, it's not. Um, there's, there's now packages on APT that you can use to install Visual Studio Code. It's, it's pretty easy to do. So, yep, pretty super easy to install and set up. Yep, yep. Um, so, I think, what should I use? Friends, what do you think I should use? To, to hide that left side there. I mean, I could put like a, a white badge, right? Just a white div over the left side here. Yeah, Caparot, it's, it's open source, free for anybody to use, and people have been deploying it into the various application, um, application stores. So you can brew, I think you can brew install it now as well, but it is on APT. So it's real easy to download and get, get it to run. Um, Loopy Nid says, let me grab that. 
Um, Loopy Nid says, Microsoft likes Linux all of a sudden. Actually, Microsoft's been building stuff for Linux for almost 10 years now. Um, in the last five, it's been kicked up and .NET features are, are now um, supported by Microsoft on Linux. And you get great support for Linux on uh, on Azure. You get Windows Subsystem for Linux now if you're running Windows 10. And you can run things in Linux on Windows. It sounds kind of weird, but trust me, it works. It's really great stuff. So, but I'm... As an open source developer first, and I wouldn't have joined Microsoft unless they were much more receptive to Linux. I'm very happy to see the, the progress there. Blazer Mr. Magoo says, add a white outline outside the box. Could do that. Um, looks like I have body padding margin keeping the train station off the very browser edge, which doesn't affect the absolutely. So burn it. Just burn it. Ugh. Could I use Overflow Hidden? Um, well, I like the idea of, well, there's a white board, there's a black border on the box. Set padding to zero, and then it would be right up against the left side. Um, so, right, I have a margin of two pixels around the outside of the train track. If I got rid of that, right, if I just, actually, let's just do this. Let's make it uh, two on the top, uh, two on the right. Uh, I don't really care about the bottom and the left will make zero. And it should remove on the left side, right? Should remove that. And if I set over here, right, set padding zero. Might That might clean that up for us. So we'll kick that over. We'll get this ready to restart. So, no, I don't have a CSS reset in there. Nope. I should get Sarah Drasner on to pair on some animation. She does amazing work. That's not a bad idea. That's not a bad idea. One XX Ghost asks, is Python good for noobs? Folks that are new to software development. It is. Um, you don't have to think about a compiler. You don't have to think about, um, it, right? Everything runs just on the command line. You can also do great things with um, Jupyter Notebooks. Folks say JavaScript is pretty good for developers, but I think JavaScript encourages new developers to get involved in some bad practices. And that could be a challenge for folks. So if I refresh this now, there it is. It starts at the right location. This is all the way up against the left side. So it should just go right off the, it should just disappear into my little train station there. And if I have another follower, it looks good. Oh my gosh. Um, I wouldn't say JavaScript is a bad practice, but there's, there's things about JavaScript that, um, will teach, well, thank you, I keep saying that language term, that, that will teach bad habits that, um, are unique, things that are unique to that language. And that's why you see a number of folks, um, using CoffeeScript or TypeScript, because they want to be able to use a language that that has some constraints and has um, has a compiler that will help you a little bit. JavaScript is extremely forgiving, yes. Um, is Python good to secure a good job? Depends. Every language has its own purpose and its own, um, own, its own capabilities, its own things that it's good for. Depends on what you're trying to do. Friends, I am really happy with this. I am going to mark the train in CSS task as complete here above us and I'm going to ship it I'm going to ship that thank you for the follow null flavor so uh, let's do a git status here let's ship this uh, fixed the CSS positioning and animation for the train that is awesome let's push that up that will go into our github repository We'll see that appear here, and it'll start building it out on Azure DevOps. Now, that's great, um, right? And actually, I pushed into Feature Reconnect. I want to put that into my dev branch. Let me, what do you mean you can't automatically merge? Um, oh, shoot, 
Shoot, shoot, shoot, shoot, shoot. Um, let me go into my dev branch here. Git merge. I, I'm in the wrong. I, I'm in the wrong. Yeah. That actually worked. That worked very well. Okay. Let me push that. Um, no, I'm going to push force so that we get we get everything appropriately up there. Um, try a whole bunch of different language tutorials. Uh, it, it's hard to say. I don't want to tell folks, go learn a bunch of different languages before settling on one. Um, Python is difficult to be a proficient coder in. Proficient paid coder in. Python's great for folks who are doing, um, and, and there's a lot of opportunity for folks in uh, big math types of scenarios. However, there's not a lot of jobs in that field. So big data, um, big statistical analysis, those types of things, there's a lot of opportunity comparatively for Python folks, but the overall quantity of positions is not many. C sharp .net, F sharp, eh, not F sharp as much, but C sharp .net, Java. There are lots of places, lots of enterprises that are using those languages because there's great support, great enterprise support available. So folks want to use those and they're always looking to hire more folks. So you've got a chance then to get, you have a greater chance of getting a, a job because there's more folks using it. So you won't get as much, as much of an opportunity at say a Silicon Valley company, but there aren't that many Silicon Valley companies and there's a lot of competition there. JavaScript, there's a, there's a lot of folks that are in, in, they think they're bleeding edge web companies that are doing that. However, Java is used significantly in the enterprise. Significantly. And there's a lot more of those with, with a lot more developers out there than the smaller companies that are going JavaScript everything. You need to know JavaScript. Don't get me wrong. You need to know it. But you're going to... You need to know it to do web development. But you're going to see much more traction by having a compiled language like Java or C-sharp available to you. So there it is, it was fixed, everything built properly. So I'm going to push this to production and the way that I push things into production is by merging things into my master branch. And I'm gonna delete that feature reconnect branch as well. So I am going to, yeah, can't automatically merge, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> so, uh, fixed, fixed CSS positioning, no, positioning for the train and restoring state. There we go. Create that pull request. Oh, and I still have, we'll see. Um, there we go. Verified all checks. I need to resolve a couple conflicts here. Right, three conflicting f files. Widget support JavaScript here. So I have this logging. Let's keep this one. That's fine. And down here. If reconnect enabled, location reload. And oh, geez. They did not make this easy, did they? Hang on. Um, I want what's in the dev branch. So I'm gonna take that and get rid of this. Yeah, from here, uh, wait a sec. 
yeah, I want this version. Not that version. Okay. There we go. Yeah. That's it. Okay. Oh my goodness. All right. Mark that file as resolved. All right. Next one. User activity train. We added some features over here to this. Where is it? Oh, dear God. Um, this is... Load persisted configuration. I, I why does it highlight that? No. Um yes, I do want that. Oh my gosh, Vlado, thank you so much for the resub. Resubscribed for four months. C sharp heart. Thank you so much for the resub. Um, great to have you back, and we'll make another donation to St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital. Here we go, somewhere down here is... No, we're good. Okay. That looks like it's fixed now. Mark that one as resolved. Next file. Empty layout.razor. Really? Really? Like, come on now. Heads up, this will commit to dev. Yes, please do. So let's do this. Um, I'm going to delete the feature reconnect branch locally. I'm going to pull, no, pull the dev branch, right? Let's make sure that, well, that should build properly, right? Um... Right, dot net build, and that should build properly. Fritz Bits button is 10 layers of divs. Oh my goodness. Yeah, that's a thing. Wow. There's a lot of local bias. Uh, here in SG, dot net isn't the thing. Java is big. SG. Everybody's local market is different. Um, there's... There's a thing um, very much that's that's happening here in the Philadelphia market where there is a, a rather large consulting company downtown that specializes in Java and they have they have the city contracts. So everything for the city is Java. Consequently, if you want to do business with the city, everything is in Java. So a lot of things that are enterprises interacting with Philadelphia use Java because if you want to do business, You've got to use Java. Okay. So, um, that looks good. Now, uh, yep, merge into master and required statuses must pass. So, it's rebuilding out in uh, Azure DevOps here. And I can click through and see the details of that. Because this is my continuous integration, right? It's doing its build. It's making sure that everything works properly. So there it is doing the build now. And it should come back positive because we actually just built the exact same thing here. VAR making Jeff sad, set interval. What? So Microsoft needs to persuade this consulting firm to use C Sharp and .NET. It's their business. They enjoy Th That's what they want to use. That's fine. So, all right, publish, that looks good. So I can now, I'm gonna go back. This should refresh and turn green in just a second here as the notification is sent to GitHub and will merge. So, and there we go. So we'll merge that, which will kick off a container build and deploy. So just merged into master. Fantastic. Um, I'll go back over to my code and I'm going to get rid of that feature branch. This one. Right. Let me go over to that branch. Come here, you. This one. 
Goodbye. Nice knowing you. All right. So now I'm back in my dev branch. My train works. It does the things that I need it to do. Um, my my layout still has that Fritz is trying to get reconnected thing. Um, we can get rid of that. That's up here in my index. My index page. Do here. Right? This. I can get rid of that. That's only on screen so that I know it's working. Um... So, Fall In asks, that's a good question. Let's share that question here on screen. There we go. Fall In asks, can you tell, is there a possibility to share a C Sharp library that's stored at Azure DevOps Git and publish it as a NuGet package? Yes. Um, you can, there are tasks on Azure DevOps for you to uh, package a library as a NuGet package. Um, and you can actually see how we do that. Oops. Let me get back over here. If I click through to, uh, right, devazure.com, we actually have the Stream Tools project here. You can click through to this. This is free and open for anybody to click into. This is a project we were working on on Stream that builds a NuGet package for working with um, uh, the stream deck. So there are no historical builds here, but you should be able to look at the steps. Why can't I look at the steps? You should be able to look at the steps. I'll show you what the steps look like. Um, the build process here, I thought there was, is, there, is it in the release pipeline? There might be a release pipeline is where I'm doing it. No. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, stream tools. Stream deck tools. There it is. Oh, different project. My bad. This is the project for the stream deck. Um, Stram PT. Let me cue that message. Yes, NuGet is package management for .NET. So here's my builds for the Stream Deck tools. This is a library that we built, like I said, so you can target the Stream Deck, the Elgato Stream Deck, and work with those capabilities. I can click into this, and you can see it'll do a .NET build, .NET test. You can then .NET pack, and this will create a NuGet package for you from your, uh, from your library, okay? I then have a pack template that I use here, and I publish to NuGet right here. So you set up a NuGet, con NuGet.org connection, right? You have to give it your authentication capabilities. And when this runs, it will pack, create, take your library, turn it into a NuGet package so it can be distributed. And then it will publish it to NuGet. Good question. Thank you so much for asking that. I really appreciate it. Um, the next question is C Sharp. It works perfectly on Linux and Visual Studio Code. For a whole month, we've been doing it, and it's been terrific. It's, it is completely cross-platform and works great in all the different environments. So we've been we've been having a really good experience with it here on stream, yes. Um, so we had a little bit of a hiccup getting started, getting set up. It turned out I had a, a VPN configuration on my desktop here that uh, blocked me from downloading some things from the Microsoft website. But now that I have it working, works great yes spicy condiment is correct there um you can you can even run sql server on linux now runs inside of a docker container but you can st uh, certainly start that up and load whatever you'd like into that sql server container and deploy and use it appropriately absolutely so um all right our train works right if i go back and i look at our list of things up here one of the last there's, I'm looking at my clock here. I've got 25 minutes till we start the dev intersection show. Um, so we need to be able to rejoin channels when the server restarts. Is there a channel that we're actively in? If so, rejoin it. Um, that's not too bad to do, I don't think. Another thing that we need to do here that was actually requested by our friend, um, and I'm going to put it down here after offline development. 
by our friend uh, Imperial is we need to also be able to support the subscriber train. We need to be able to listen for new subscribers and trigger that appropriately. The good news is we've are now got a framework that we can use to listen for subscriber pub sub notices because Twitch will send us a notification when there is a new subscriber to a channel we're listening to. And we can raise that event. If we raise it using the exact same model we just used for followers, everything will just work. I'm feeling pretty good about that. I like the way that just fits together. Right? Well, do your best. I'm I, Darn right I'm going to do my best. So, let's take a look at rejoining channels. So when the bot restarts, we need to figure out what channels we need to rejoin. Honey Pop says, yar. Yes, yar indeed. We've, we've got the pirate hat on. It's a little bit tight on my head and I'm starting to feel like it's squeezing out my brain and it's gonna ooze out my ear here. Good thing I've got ear pods in, uh, ear, earbuds in, otherwise it'll drool out onto the floor. Hey, Source Scoot, good to see you. Thanks for tuning in. Um, so how do we rejoin a channel? How do we know what channels to rejoin and that we're actively monitoring and even restart monitoring when the server restarts? Um, so let's think about this. We're persisting state, right? Um, for the application, because we have these configuration elements here. So I think when we save this, right? So we have some other things that are enabled for some other features that we built, right? Here's the user activity configuration. Is it enabled? Um, I think we need another property on our channel that says actively in the channel, right? So if we do that, we right, we would be able to load up our all of our channel configurations and look at them and say, oh, here are the ones that we need to join and rejoin those. I think that's going to be the way to go here. So let me go find this, which is conveniently because I echo the type into the file. Um, and it's not going to be saved to a file when we're in production space. It actually saves this configuration. Um, actually, I don't think I have this saving to Azure Table Storage yet. We're going to need to cross that. Um, let's see. I need to get... Let me put it here. Uh, channel configuration Azure. Uh, channel config save to Azure. That should be easy to do because it's just an interface. We'd be able to swap it out for save to SQL Server, save to Mongo, save to, to DynamoDB, whatever provider you might like. I like Azure, so I'm gonna save it to Azure Table Storage. So, um, let's see here. Okay, so I'm gonna go find channel configuration. So let's go find channel configuration, there, all right. Um, so let's add a type in here, add a property. We'll make this a Boolean and let's, um, let's say, uh, connected to channel because folks were going to want to say, yes, turn this on or turn it off and we'll turn that on. I didn't run into the same site. That wasn't the issue that we had, Janescu. It, same, same, same site cookie was not the problem we had. So we're okay there. Um, and I'm going to start this with a value of false. So even the files that we have saved on disk, it'll be able to reload and get a value there. So now I want to go back when I said join channel, which happens inside of the actors. I use actors to pass around state of the application here. So I have a channel actor and a channel manager actor. And there is... A method in here that says join channel and it starts there it is join channel go get a channel actor that's going to manage this and it knows how to join the channel how to interact how to how to behave 
inside that channel. So it goes and gets the channel configuration, gets new channel configuration, and returns it. After it gets this, if it says, hey, go get me channel configuration, I feel like we now need to say, we're connected, save that channel configuration. And now we'll have that channel configuration saved that says we're connected. Look at my lovely hair. No, kidding. Totally kidding. That's, yeah. That's kind of... Strange things are afoot at the Circle K. It's kind of strange. Um, so... When we're doing this, we're joining the, we're specifying the channel to join. So what I'm going to do is if config dot connect if not connected to channel, we're about to connect to the channel. So I'm going to say config connected to channel is true. And now I want to save that information. Uh, channel configuration actor. Um, I want to tell it the channel configuration, right? Didn't I have that? Don't I have that set up right? The channel configuration actor is uh, uh, over here. It has two things that I can tell it. A save configuration for channel message. Okay. Um, where was I? I was working somewhere down here. I love looking in the gutter here and seeing exactly where the error is. Um, so we're going to tell it, we're going to tell it a, uh, new save configuration for channel uh the channel name is uh that the channel configuration is now that config done now it'll go and tell it hey go save this stuff and continue processing i don't need to wait for that go do its thing and um i'm gonna even right i can do it isn't it isn't it isn't it Tell async, isn't there something there like that? Nah, just tell it. All right, fine. Hey, you go store this information and come on back. And that should be very, very quick. Looking at what's going on in the chat room, blah, 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 blah. All right, we're good. I look, my look is not complete without a bottle of rum. Um, you know what? I could go get a cap bottle of Captain Morgan downstairs, but that might be against toss to show alcohol on stream. That's I think that's against terms of service. I might I, I could be wrong, but I'm I'm yeah. Don't want to mess with that. Um so my channel configuration actor, now I've gotta also not just be able to say get the configuration for a specific channel, I need to say get a list of channels. Yeah, channel would need to be, stream need to be set to adult content, and we don't want to do that. Uh, I don't want to set the channel to adult content. Um, you know what I might, you know what I, I should do here? Yes, Robert Tables is, he is set to adult content, and he's, he enjoys a fine beverage from the folks at Coors. I think I need to get a list of channel configurations and be able to return those, you know? Um, so I channel configuration context right now has two methods, get configuration for channel, save configuration for channel. I think I need to go find just, um, just the list of configurations. So just the list of channels that are available. So if I update this, right? and make this return an I enumerable of type string. Give me a collection of strings, right? Um, get channels, get configured channel, eh. Uh, get connected channels. So we can look at each one of the files and return whether or not that is true. It would be a select where clause when we get into um, when we get into uh, a real database here. So let me do a control dot there, bring in my using statement, and that works now. I need to update my provider that implements that file storage channel configuration here and add that new method, which now means I need to look at the storage folder, 
find all the files that don't have the underscore in the name because you can't have an underscore right you can't have an under no you can have an underscore in a twitch name right that's a problem well it's development right I could load it up and deserialize it into channel configuration and if it works it works if it doesn't it doesn't could take a little bit of time though hitting the disk but I don't really care this is more of a development feature you know so I think I'm okay with that um, I'm gonna mark this as a to-do search through the files on disk and ensure it and return only those that are channel configuration and connected equals true. That's what I'm gonna do there. Um, let me put this in a feature branch. Uh, get ch checkout dash B feature um, reconnect channels. So I have this somewhere that is uh, isolated. It isn't gonna get inadvertently swept up we can refact, rebase it and merge. So git, uh, git commit and um, started work on reconnecting channels after server restart. Folks don't think about that too much. And I will push. Yep, you don't know the name of that, so let's copy paste. There it goes. Push that up. And we're good. Fantastic. <clears throat> Parse the file name by the last underscore to determine the channel name. Yep, that's a great way to, to do it, M. Holloway. I think that's going to be a very good way to get started there. But before we wrap up here today, I want to do a giveaway. Ash Caravan? Ash Caravan just resubscribed for three months. Oh my goodness. Woohoo indeed. Let me Oh my I want to give away some stickers here today. So let's set this up. Yes. I have a bunch I have a handful of stickers that we need to send out already. Two Wolf won some yesterday. Let's give away some more. Exclamation point here. If you're in the chat room and you want to win some stickers, fill that out. Uh, exclamation point here will get you into the box. I'll ship stickers anywhere in the world. And uh, we'll let the Mario music run. And uh, it's a bunch of stickers, a bunch of our emotes, and I'll even throw in, there it is, I'll throw in some live coder buttons. There you go. Focus on that for a second there, camera. Give me the focus. Do the focus thing. Come on. You can do it, camera. You did this the other day. It's right there. No, you're not going to focus for me. You make me sad. So we'll drop one of those in for you as well. I've got three of these to send out. This will make a fourth. That'll be just fine. We'll get these sent out before I leave for Orlando and Microsoft Ignite. Tech Johnson, thanks so much for the follow. I appreciate you joining us. So buttons and stickers, it's like a dream come true. Well, it's it's a thing. Right, we're, send them out. Folks like to put the stickers on their laptops, on their computer, wherever it might be, on notebook. And the button, of course, people like to put on their laptop bag. Show some support for the Live Coders team. Thank you so much, everybody, for tuning in. Let's... We've got about a minute left here. Oh, my goodness. What the heck was that? It, uh, hello, hello. Welcome, my friend. Look at look at all this. We're going to... Thank you so much, Sismus, for those 10 subs. We're going to make donations to St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital. 10 folks are going to get the ability to remove advertisements here, and they're going to get 17 emotes that they can use live on stream. Vasky, AJ2017, Coding Gorilla, Restarted, Kenpachi90, Anubia, Neogeta, Julio Barina, Wanna Paradise, and Elfin. Congratulations. You just got gift subs. 
from our friend Sismus. Thank you so much, everybody. I appreciate that. We're almost at the end of the song. I'm going to cut it off there. I'm going to cut it off right there. Absolutely. For the kids, we're going to make those donations. This is St. Jude. Natural Kappa. I appreciate the sub. Bring in your Twitch Prime. And uh, we'll make another donation to St. Jude. Let's do it. Let's kick off this. And let's give away some stickers. Here we go. The, the bot went away? It does. It, it has done that at times. Oh my gosh, move that. We want to be able to see. Source Goot. Oh my gosh, congratulations, my friend. You just won a pack of stickers. I don't think I need to send you any more buttons. I know we sent you some buttons just a little bit ago. The Source Goot's another member of the Live Coders team, just like I am not myself. TBD Gamer and some of the other folks here in chat. Congratulations, Source Goot. I still have your mailing address. Uh, thanks so much for joining us. But friends, it's it's about an, out of time here for me today. Here's what I want you to do. We're going to set up... I'm. We're going to send folks over... I, I don't think I can raid over to the Dev Intersection channel. I'm not going to be able to, to swap hands here real quick. But we're going to be over on Dev Intersection in just a few minutes. Just a few minutes. So what I'm going to do... I'm going to raid and I'm going to try and catch you over there. No need for a raid call. Don't need to announce our presence. You, we know we're going on over to Dev Intersection. You're coming back to me. And we will set up uh, with our good friend Richard over there to start bringing folks in and start starting up the stream. This video, like all my other videos, will be available a little bit later on. You've seen some more of my videos are appearing on YouTube. One video a day gets posted out there. And uh, I hope you check them out. Let me know what you think. Drop your comments on the YouTube page. YouTube.com slash C Sharp Fritz. Take care, everybody. I'll see you in just a minute over on Dev Intersection. Thanks. <laughs>